Good morning from Big Sky Country. I'm Stacy, owner of Montana Used Bricks, and I have had a very busy weekend, so this video may be a little bit late. I'm hoping to get it out today, but I just I don't know how long it's going to take me to edit it, and I do have a couple other things I need to get done today as well. I volunteer for a nonprofit called Wild About Cats Rescue and Sanctuary. Their mission statement is what they call trap, neuter, return of feral cat colonies. I have been working with them for about seven years. My husband and I foster kittens for them during the kitten season. Every year in June, we do very elaborate, what we call cowboy supper with steak, potatoes, and all the trimmings, and that was last night. So I'm a little bit tired today too from all the running around and getting things set up, helping during the event. It's a lot of fun and we look forward to it each year. It also pretty much takes up the weekend. Sundays are usually our day to recoup after running around all day. I did want to get this video out. Today I'm going to talk about the biggest Lego haul I ever did. I do have some Lego haul videos that I do. I I think this one kind of needed its own little video <laughs> because it was definitely the biggest Lego buy I had ever done to the point of being nerve wracking. <laughs> it was also the best investment I ever made in Lego. About two years ago in July, I happened to be scrolling Facebook classifieds and I don't usually get on the Facebook marketplace classifieds very often because usually local sellers are selling them for a lot more than what I'm willing to pay, which is why I like the bidding process on eBay much better. My friends are always tagging me whenever they see Lego for sale and occasionally I'll go out and look and I think what happened that weekend is somebody had tagged me on just a small box of Lego and it was like twice as much as I was willing to pay. But then I just kind of started looking around and I saw this one advertisement for $1,500 worth of Lego and I thought wow what does this lady seem to think she had? I went out and I looked at the pictures and she had quite a few pictures. They all were different. She explained what she had. She said that she wants to sell these in one bowl. I started looking at it and I went in and I talked to my husband a little bit and I thought, well, I'm going to contact her. I sent her a message. I said, hey, I'm really, really interested in this. Is there any way I could come take a look at the Lego before I purchase it? She said, no, I don't really want you coming here but I will send you more pictures. I was thinking, oh, maybe that's a red flag because they're not gonna let you look at the product before you buy it. Then she sent pictures. She sent probably, I would say a dozen pictures, maybe even more. Each one of those pictures were pretty much close up of a box of Lego. None of them were duplicated. She had so much Lego that she could take 12 pictures and have them all be completely different. Of course, I, I ran back inside to talk to my husband and I said, okay, here's the deal. And I explained it to him. I showed him the pictures. I said, I'm just not sure if I would be crazy to do this or if I would be crazy to pass it up. Of course, my husband, I hate it when he does this, but he's like, oh, it's totally up to you. It's your business. You decide. I kind of thought about it for a little bit and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it because it's a lot of Lego. It will keep me busy for quite a while and I may never get a deal like this again. The lady and I talked and we decided that I would pay for it. This was a Sunday and she said, my husband and I will load it up and we'll bring it out. So we'll be there by 1130 because this was early in the morning on Sunday. I Once I hit pay on PayPal, I had that buyer's remorse. I started to think, oh my God, what did I do? I just gave this lady $1,500 I really don't have <laughs> for Lego I haven't seen. I started to panic. About two hours later, I'm staring out my front window, waiting for this lady to come by, and I see her and her husband in a pickup truck drive by. How I knew it was them, even though I never met this lady before, is as they go by, I look in the bed of the truck. The bed of the truck is completely filled with Lego. I was shocked. They came around and we started unloading all this Lego and I could not believe the stuff she had. She had so many parts. She had partial sets. She had a couple of full sets. And a lot of the parts were the older. They were the browns, light gray, dark grays, some of the 
older horses, just all kinds of stuff. And manuals, a lot of the older manuals that you can't really find anymore. I got to talking to her, I said, okay, what are you doing with all this Lego? And she said, well, I was buying it in bulk and then creating sets and selling the sets on eBay. She was now retired and her and her husband wanted to travel and she just didn't want the Lego anymore. She was done, she wanted to sell it. But she decided that she wanted to sell it in bulk. She didn't want to just piecemeal it out. She didn't want to have to do like a brickling store or anything like that. She just wanted it out of her house. She said she had lots of offers to take certain parts of it, but not everything. And she had had the post up for about a week. When she first got here, she goes, what are you gonna do with all the Lego? I said, come here, and I showed her my store, and, and she was very impressed, and she was very happy that I was the one that was getting the Lego parts because she knew that they would be taken care of, and all those wonderful Lego parts would find a home, <laughs> and a lot of them have. When we unloaded, I kinda did a really rough weight of everything. When it was all said and done, we think it was about 350 pounds worth of Lego. We're not 100% sure, because like I said, it was really hard to weigh that much Lego. There was manuals in there, there was, like I said, partial sets, full sets. The biggest find, I think, in that, besides the manuals, because some of those manuals were the rarer, more rare manuals, there was over nine pounds of minifigure and minifigure parts and my husband is still, to the uh, two years later, still going through those minifigures. Once we had all the Lego, we realized the Lego was very dusty, dirty, and had that musty smell. So I ended up having to wash all that Lego. So I came up with this whole process. I had a huge tub that I would dump parts into, and I would let them soak during the day in dish detergent, and I'd go out every now and then and kind of stir it up a little bit to get some of the dirt knocked off of it, and then we would dry it on towels on our sidewalk. I did this for probably two or three weeks of going through everything. We bought new containers because she brought stuff over in cardboard boxes and bags and containers that didn't have lids. We went out and bought a whole bunch of storage containers so that we would have some place to store all these Lego parts. I immediately started putting the more unique parts into inventory and a lot of those sold quickly. Like within a week of having some of those parts in inventory, they were selling. It was very profitable. To make sure that I was gonna make a profit on this, I kept a spreadsheet so whenever I put parts into BrickLink from that Lego haul, I would put the BrickLink cost in a spreadsheet and what I paid for the Lego just to see and it did not take long for me to break even and just a few months later I realized if I sold everything I would almost double what I had paid for the Lego and we still have two big containers completely full from that haul and that was two years ago so we are still going through that what I really like about this haul was the fact that there was so much older stuff in it because the light gray and dark gray sell really well in my store, as do the browns. So it was really nice to have a lot of those and to be able to sell those. Some of the sets were the older Western sets. They were probably about 90% complete, and I was able to either finish them out of my own inventory or I was able to buy the parts on BrickLink so that we could resell them and those sold really quickly. I still have two or three sets I'm trying to get parts for so that I can resell it. I know I've talked about the Sphinx Surprise Adventure set that I've bought parts for to get that sold in my store and that was part of that massive lot. I believe I still have two or three more Western sets that I'm collecting parts for. There's some really rare parts in there that I just have not been able to find yet to finish those out. It may get to the point where I just sell them incomplete because they do have all the minifigs, it's just certain parts that are missing from them. There was even a couple of sets that I was able to put aside for my son because they were from the same time period as when he first started collecting Lego. So he was pretty excited when he found out I had a couple more to add to some of the series of sets that he had. So that was my largest Lego haul I've ever done. And it was a lot of fun to go through all those parts. I still have fun going through what I have left because there's so many wonderful finds in 
in those containers that you really just don't know what is there until you start putting it into inventory. Would I do that again? Yes, most definitely. If I had the opportunity to buy in a large bulk like that, I would definitely take it. But in the small town I live in, it was really a surprise to me that this lady had so much Lego because there aren't a lot of large Lego collectors in the town that I live in. I will definitely be keeping my eyes out and tell my friends to keep an eye out for those larger Lego hauls because they are definitely profitable, definitely worth it, definitely worth the time. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you really liked it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Oh, and I do want to say before you go, before you run off to the next video, I do want to thank everybody who has taken the time to like one of my videos and especially those who took the time to subscribe. I know I'm only at like 75 subscribers, but when you're doing this, you kind of feel like you're talking to yourself. You're in a room by yourself, you're talking to a camera, and you just don't know where your information is going. So I really appreciate the people that take the time to subscribe, to like the video, and to especially when they leave a comment. That means a lot to me. As somebody who watches a lot of YouTube, I know it's really easy to just scroll on to the next video and not take the time to hit those buttons, subscribe, make comments. So I really do appreciate it. So thank you to everyone who has done that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.